All right. Um, before we move on, I realized that in the previous video, I never really gave an explanation of why we, why the, the layout looks kind of like this. Uh, so I wanted to briefly just talk about it before we move on. This is the schematic that we came up with in the previous section, and we can follow the connections and see how they are how they actually show up in the layout. Now you can see that from VDD we connect it to the PMOS and then eventually we are connected to out. Well, here this is the PMOS and we're going to be moving from VDD we're going to be going through the channel and through the gate and eventually we end up out. And here this input is connected to the gate in the same way that here our in is actually connected right in the middle of our transistor and you can see that our in is also connected here to where our NMOS is just like how it is on the schematic and even here you can see that we can go we go from ground through the transistor and then we're going to out in the same way that we're going from ground through the transistor and then eventually to where out is going to be. And then finally, uh, you can see how VD the body of the PMOS is attached to VDD just in the same way that this contact is attached to VDD here. And here ground is connected to the body of the NMOS just like this. So. Hopefully, at least you can see a little bit of the connection between the schematic and the layout and how everything plays out uh, in the entire system. So hopefully that helped a little bit. And so let's move, go back to our layout. So what we need to do is actually make the connections for out. And so I'm going to, let's bring this up. I'm going to tap on metal one. I'm going to use the rectangle tool and then I'm quickly going to try to create something here. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. Oh, and maybe even just move this a little bit. Put it here. I'm going to copy this with the C. close it there. I'm going to use one last, one last rectangle. Oops. Right about here. And let's just keep this like that. Perfect. All right. Enough to full screen. And so that's kind of what we have here. So here is the final part. Um, so now we actually have to tell the layout where are the ports. So in from our schematic we have our, our pins, our ports, um, there's in and out. And then we also have to specify VDD and ground. And again with more sophisticated layouts and more sophisticated circuits uh, for every pin that you that you have, you have to specify it uh, within this place. So let's first do let's do uh, the easier one, which is out. And so what we want to do is have we want to tell Cadence that this metal connection right here is out. As you can see, this is after this is after we go through the transistor here and after we go through the transistor. So obviously this is this whole connection here is where we're going to measure out. So in order to tell kids that, what we want to do is go to create, label, and we want to specify uh, the name of the pin out. It has to be the same name as 
what's in the schematic. Otherwise, it, it, it won't work. And let's select the layer, and we're going to keep it at metal one. And just so that it's not so big, I'm going to put it at 0.05 and hit enter. And I just need to place it somewhere in metal one. And it could be here, it could be there. I just like to place it in the middle. And it's, it's more to make sure that you selected metal one uh, because this is where, because the rest of this is metal one. And if you had selected some other one, it's, it, you'll have some errors. In. Okay. So now let's actually make the input. And what we want to do is that, as I mentioned before, you want to try to keep the, all the pins and ports on metal one. So in order to have a connection with the poly, in order to have the poly be that input that we talked about, you want to make a, you, what you want to do is create a via between metal one and poly. If you think of how silicon is uh, is made, in order to go from one layer to another, you have to have like a, a via. Think of it as like a bridge. And so the way to do that, you hit O, and we want to do a metal one to poly uh, via. And that pops up here and just put it anywhere in the poly. And again, you can think of it as a, a bridge, so to speak. And so now um, we are going to go to Create and Label. And I'm going to change this to N. I'm going to hit Enter. And I'm going to place it right above that metal one. And again, this is uh, just so that we can keep the convention of having all the ports on metal one. And in order to do that, we have to make sure we have the poly being connected to the port. Cool. And so now the last thing we need to do is put a VDD in ground. So we can type O again. Oh, uh, no. We'll go back to the label. Sorry about that. And you can do, if you type in uh, VDD and ground right after e one right after each other um, where it's gonna allow you to do is be able to uh, first hit VDD and place that and then it will automatically change to ground so if you have a long list of ports you can uh, click on that and you hit escape um, by the way yes if you need to escape any tool just you know you can hit escape now uh, one important thing to note is that you can see that there's a uh, exclamation point for VDD and for ground, and that's because they're uh, global variables. Uh, for all of your global sources, you can hit VDD and ground. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna need to make an exclamation point, and our in and out are not uh, global sources. Um, typically, your only only global sources are gonna be VDD and ground. And so now we have um, all our connections. So let's go to DRC. And make sure that we are set. And perfect. We have no errors. Okay, now here's the other important thing um, we're going to touch on. We talked about the DRC, and then now we got to talk about the LVS. Kind of as in the same way that I was just explaining how there's a connection between the schematic and the layout, Cadence has to make sure that what you had as a schematic actually matches the connections in the layout. And if it doesn't, then uh, you can't really like um, have the circuit work. So if you go to calibrate and run LVS, so this will pop up. Um, and in rules, again, just make sure that this file uh, is correct and it's uh, um, 
it's also in the description and what you want to do is make sure that uh, in your layout you have export from layout viewer selected and in that list you also have that selected and you hit uh, run LVS now what this is going to do again is is going to take is going to look at the schematic and is going to look at all the connections in it and seeing if all of those connections are found in the layout and if it's not um, then it will give you an error now I'll say from experience that this is partly one of the more frustrating uh, parts of working with Cadence uh, the errors are very vague, vague and it's very hard to tell sometimes if you miss what connection you missed. So if everything works out just as we did, um, just as we got it, um, we have that it says, oh, happy face, correct. And but let me just give you an example of let's say, let's say we were missing some connection. Let's say we never put this out port. If we never labeled it, um, and so. Cadence will be like, yes, that's connected, but it doesn't know that that's the output. If you do LVS, and you run it, and click Save, you'll first start to see that this LV LVS is incomplete, as you noted there got a frowny face and then you'll kind of start to see you can look at the statistics to help you find where things are wrong now I like to see here you can see the discrepancies incorrect sports and you can see that on the layout there is something missing that on the source meaning the, the schematic it is called out and after a while you'll start to pick up on the clues on what this means it, as you can see that it's saying hey there's this out in the schematic but I don't see anything like that in layout um, so remember we took that out so we can just put it back in and so this is again uh, one of the more uh, trickier parts of working with uh, cadence and so don't you know don't worry if, uh, if it frustrates you a couple times. Uh, one last thing before we're done with the actual layout, before we start simulating, is that you can note here that we have the width and the length uh, for the transistors. And like I mentioned, uh, in, in some of the labs, you'll need to change these. Um, you can hit on it. You can right click and click on properties. And again, you can. I believe here in parameter you can specify the width and the length and just so you can see if we actually if we make it bigger it actually makes it a little bit bigger physically so you might have to like move around this and let's make this even bigger just so you can see how there you go so you can see how it's physically bigger so you would need to start moving stuff around uh, you can hit U to undo, by the way, and hit F. All right, so we have our layout, and it worked. It matches the schematic, and now we are ready to make sure that this thing uh, works correctly. And our final video will show you how to do that. So, thank you.